and welcome to the DM's Book Club, a podcast where we read about some Dungeons and Dragons and discuss how we might include it in our role playing campaigns. With me back again, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you just, stop trying to make me laugh. I don't know why you keep coming back into my Zoom room to talk more about D and D. It's Rob from the Realms of Fire podcast. Hi, Rob. How are you Hello. Doing? <laughs> what do you mean you don't know why I come back? I, I so entered I'm... in a Zoom room and you were already here. Oh right, <laughs> ready, yeah. Ready right. to talk more about different campaign settings and stuff, which I think yeah. has become a thing. It's nice to chat about because obviously we had Tolus before yeah. and then I taught your ear off about Modrons and then you're like what about this one for the next one and I was like yeah. okay so now that's our thing now we talk about settings and then I inflict other, other creatures on you yeah. to try but we've, got, we've got other settings coming up which is exciting yes no I can't wait but can't all good with you otherwise fine fine just wrapped up a chronicle of vampire the requiem Ooh. so now i am about to go into the second part of salt marsh so i am going back into the D D sphere i think that's what it's called we've just spoilers done the first bit i don't think that's a spoiler we've captured a boat <laughs> it's the last thing that i remember so we've got a boat Mm-hmm. So I assume we're just going to become pirates. Pretty much. As soon as, as, soon as you got a boat, you're like, well, that's it. Everyone else <laughs> succumbs to our, our, yeah. our domain. Um, and my character, the orc, Codron, is he called Codron? Can't remember what he's called now. He's having more and more flashes across the plains of sun-parched desert lands. Uh, and his parallel alternate life as a barbarian. Oh, uh, barbarian gladiator, even. I've been reading a lot of Michael Moorcock recently. So. <laughs> Rob, what are we talking about today? What is the topic of choice? I'm laughing. Why are you laughing? No, because I'm ready. I'm ready for this now. You're ready. ready. We're going back. We're going old school. We are going to Blackmore. The, arguably, first ever Dungeons & Dragons setting. So old, it predates Dungeons & Dragons. Again, I've never heard of this setting until you sort of sent across to me and said, why don't we try this? And... Mm -hmm. Yes, an interesting sort of history to it. I'm sure lots of people, <laughs> you're laughing, and lots of people will know the history of it. I certainly didn't until mm. the last couple of days reading it all about it. And I think it's it's one of those things where I'm surprised there hasn't been like, you know, like a, the social network film but mm-hmm. about D&D about this. You know, it's it's such an interesting sort of how people come together and have the tensions and stuff and then yeah. fall out and then things happen. I, I think it's coming. Myself. I think it's coming because the amount of books that have come out recently You've mm. got Empires of Imagination about Gygax. You've got the graphic novel, The Rise of the Dungeon Master, I think it is. Mm. You've got one, oh, what's it called? Something like The Dueling Wizards, which is about Arneson and Gygax, which mm. is a fascinating read. I'll get the actual title up while I explain it, but it is the basically the story of how D&D and TSR came to be. Mm. However, a lot of it is also about stock options and portfolios and stuff because so much of that was baked in from the very beginning. Game Wizards, it's called Game Wizards, Game the Wizards. Epic Battle for Dungeons and Dragons mm. by John Peterson, who writes some brilliant histories of RPGs. Mm. John Peterson is uh, an excellent writer if you want mm. to cover anything in RPGs. But I think it's coming. I do think with the rise of Critical Role, with the rise of D&D being this multi-million dollar mm. thing I think there will be a social network where Justin Timberlake plays Gary Gygax <laughs> Gary Gygax I imagine that would be and yeah Jesse Einsberg as uh, yeah. as Dan Arneson Timothy Chalamet as everyone's rogue everyone's quite yes, ill Tim- looking Tim- rogue Timothy Chal- Chalamet playing everyone else yeah <laughs> someone repeated. someone described Timothy Chalamet as looking like a medieval shoe and I can see what they mean <laughs> Um, that's all I, I, I think see. that's very unfair, but I'm laughing because I do think it's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, not he's not ugly, it's just he has the presence of a medieval shoe. There is the Dungeons Dragon movie coming, of course, the new one. Yes. Which I'm hoping every single person who isn't a main cast member is played by the same person using a different voice with a silly hat. I think yeah. that would truly get it over the, what Dungeons & Dragons actually is. It is one of those things because you get you hear more and more stuff about it each day, like, oh, you know, Chris mm. Pine's in it, all these other people, and they say, oh, we're really looking forward to it. And I'm like, yeah, but it's going to be really serious now. And yeah. it's D&D, as we know, and role-playing games in general, you know, they're about epic stories, but it's I see it as inept people playing them and you enjoying, yeah. and, oh, and you can make those decisions, you can be as cool as you want to be, but then mm. you'll, you'll fuck up. The door will open yeah. when you need it to open and all that sort of thing. And that's so, it, that's the end of the film it'll be 20 minutes long because <laughs> they fuck up a door and that's yeah, it. all right 
<laughs> anyway, uh, Blackmore, yes. yes. So we are talking about on Blackmore, the origin. So I'll give try to do a little potted a bullshit potted history, history for those yeah. uninitiated, i.e. myself. What okay. is Blackmore? So Blackmore comes from the mind of Dave Arneson. Dave Arneson being one of the two minds, arguably more, behind Dungeons and Dragons, but they the two of note, Dave Arneson and Gary Gygax. Basically, Dave Arneson was a war gamer. And he enjoyed putting out all his soldiers and running games for his, his friends. Wargaming war back in the day often had umpires. Um, you, you would sort of invite people around, almost like a games master. You'd bring people around and you'd say, this is a scenario. You're the Russians, you're the French, and this is the battle of Austerlitz. Off you go. And the umpire would decide, right, fogs rolled onto the battlefield now. So, mm-hmm. you know, X, Y, Z. And basically within... Arneson's group of friends, there were a few other people, they started experimenting as people who play games do. They started sort of messing around with the format. And now it's very difficult to find out who or what started when. Yes. But around the same time, there was a game, I'm just looking at my phone, but I'm be, I'm, because I'm actually looking at it. You're looking at it, yeah. Yeah, called Braunstein or mm-hmm. Braunstein. And basically the idea was, this was by David Wesley, he sort of saw what's called a Kriegspiel and stuff in his college library, brought it up to date. And the idea was you're playing a war game about this little German town and the, the town of Braunstein or Steen. I don't I can never I don't even know what it is. One of the two. One of the two. Oh, Braunstein. That's down Braun, the road. Yeah, down the road, mate. That's a different that's Wrong a town. different uh, principality. Yeah. Um <laughs> And the idea there was, he was like, right, we're going to play this game. It's going to be set here. But before we have the battle, we're going to play the town. So one person, you're the mayor, okay? And the other person, you're the church leader. And the other person, you're the soldiers. You know, you're you're the the garrison Mm -hmm. leader. And here's a few events that are happening. And then from there, what he ran was that game. That became the game. The the war game never really happened. Everyone got too invested. In that, so at one point, Dave Arneson's character, I think he was playing a very pro-royal character and someone else was playing like a Republican character. So they had a duel and there were no rules. They literally went up to the umpire and said, well, how do we do this? And he said, oh, okay, um, whatever, you know. No, if you know what they said, I think roll 2d6 each, whoever rolls highest wins the duel. Mm-hmm. And Dave Arneson's character was killed. So arguably he had the first character killed in an RPG as well. <laughs> um, but from this, this nucleus of group of people who were experimenting with games, mm-hmm. grew Dave Arneson's mega campaign in a way. He basically developed this world and he started saying to people, okay, well, you can have a bit and you can have a bit and you can have a yeah. bit and you can all run your own little bits. And his bit of this world was called Blackmore, the castle of Blackmore. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, it'd be a cool story to tell going down below into the dungeons of Blackmore and seeing what's down there. And from there, woof, we have everything. So, dungeons. <laughs> yeah, dungeons and indeed dragons. dragons. Um, and those games are wonderful. You can still see Arneson's notes and miniatures. His miniatures are some of the quaintest, most adorable things. He would often go to pound store, dollar stores, and get bags of monsters and then glue um, or plasticine on wings and stuff. So his earliest dragons are T-Rexes with wings plasticine oh. coming off them. Do you know the thing about the bag of space monsters, Fiona? I do, but for those who don't, what okay, is sure the bag of space monsters? So there is a classic tale of there was this bag of dollar store Japanese toys which were like there'd be about an inch or two big of kaiju monsters from various films mm-hmm. Gygax got hold of these and was like okay this is one what's this it's a rust monster and so that became the rust monster this is a carrion crawler all these iconic monsters that we now know mm-hmm. were because they look like Japanese kaiju toys and that's how they got it and that's how they played they played with little men miniatures and you know on ping pong tables with maps drawn out and literally with monsters before people professionally produced miniatures and stuff mm-hmm. this was the very beginning this was it this was D before D, and then guy and codified it they used the chain mail rules to start bringing the fancy elements blah 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 but essentially blackmore was the first D setting mm. there is arguments either way that you know braunstein was at the first rpg or but that was buying off Kriegspiel, which was a 19th century thing. So 
first RPG is a difficult one, but it's pretty nailed on that Blackmore is the first Dungeons and Dragons setting. Agreed. Yeah. Like, and there's yeah. the talk about like Greyhawk as well, similar mm. times of, and it, it yeah. did seem when I was reading through the stuff, like they were so keen to get something, like you said, codified down, written down, because other people were thinking about these things. Yeah. Like you said, this nebulous group of friends. And that's the beauty of it. Like, I know when we're going to go into a little bit mm. of detail about Blackmore and stuff, those first sort of two supplements that it's yeah. a mentions Blackmore. And spoiler alert, they don't really say much about Blackmore very, at very all. Little. As yeah. as we discovered, we were like, oh no, <laughs> when we're looking yeah. at it. There is but no it, yeah. for the oldest campaign, there is barely anything. Yeah, there and that, that's surprising, anything. I think. Yeah. But I guess in a way, they're, certainly the the first fantasy campaign bit, which you said was done for the uh, Judges Guild, mm-hmm. um, that reads as if you're just writing it for a friend who's just looking after your game as you're going away yeah. for a couple of weeks. Yeah. So it, I found that stuff like that really interesting. It's written in mm-hmm. a way that it's meant for people who are already in a society who know who know what's going on, who have an yeah. idea. And I love that idea that you were saying that these people went to experiment with gaming, because I think that's something we kind of lost recently with some mm-hmm. 5th edition. Lots of people are like, but well, we want these older settings, we need them to be 5th edition now, and we want mm-hmm. this now as 5th edition. No one's experimenting, no one's trying out, say, other RPGs. Because like, yeah. oh, but we, want, we like playing 5th edition because everyone's played 5th edition. It's like, actually, why don't we just try it? Because yeah. if we try it, and it's crap. That's okay, because then we're like, yeah. we'll change it and stuff like that. So I do think we're yeah. maybe losing that a little bit now, but maybe, I don't know, You sometimes you know, I just want to play a game. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's gone adjacent. I think if you want to find that, you've got the OSR movement, you've got the free yes. key spill movement. So it's still around in the setting. I think it's a shame that D&D has, and, and at the end, always caveating this, there are hundreds of thousands of D&D players across the world, yes. so saying D&D players is ridiculous. Um, but I've used this comparison before, I was on Reddit, which is a cesspool for RPGs, yeah, and someone was, I think I've said this already, that you know, someone was saying, I, this isn't how I play, I don't understand how I, this isn't how I play, he watched Critical Role, that's nothing like how he used to play as a kid, and as I always use the comparison, you can play Premier League football, or you can play football in the park, they're both football. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you know what, and 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 D and D's the same. I think as long as you've got those six, you need your six stats, your armor class, maybe ascending, maybe descending. It's up to you. And your hit points, you're playing D and D. Don't yeah. worry at that point. Doesn't matter if you're using advantage or you're using Thaco or you're using proficiencies or you're using feats, you're playing D and D. Don't worry about it. It's not real. Don't worry about it. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. Blackmore's a, a post child for that. It is a group of teenagers and twenty somethings. Point a world together, stapling it together, literally in in regards to the first supplement, and going, here you go, here's a world. As you say, it's not very user friendly because it's also, <laughs> you know, it'd be like if I handed you my campaign notes from my Requiem game I've just played and said, here you go, Fiona, you run my Vampire the Requiem, yeah. you know, scenario. I've got it all, got it all written down, but good luck. I've not given yeah. you the rules. I've not de- given it, you. It's the- definitely not. It's definitely yeah. It's, the user friendly is the best term for it. I will say. The sort of second supplement one, which was sort mm. of the one after the Greyhawk one, mm-hmm. I believe was published first. That one's interesting because it has a, a really nice introduction by Gary Gygax. And then there is absolutely nothing about Black for it. Yeah, it's just, nothing. it talks about, like, as you sort of saying, the rules that sort of Dave Arneson was coming up with. So this idea he, he sort of invented, and I say loosely here, but like, yeah. he got like hit points, hit location <laughs> system, yeah. which I actually thought was really cool, actually. This idea that you could be like, okay, I want, because you always have people in your games going, I want to aim for the head or I want to aim yeah. for their knee and some people are like mm, okay and then he's like well it doesn't make a difference to the role but it could right you could be yeah. like oh it's a harder place to hit so the yeah. AC goes up why can't you do that and I yes guess- 100% that's an easy one like for me I allow that if I play D&D and it's just okay you're a disadvantage a place shot is always a disadvantage you know because you literally you're staying your blow to try and hit one place and that's it a simple rule nice and easy but it's funny to think that that yes so as you as you alluded to you had D&D White box D and D, colloquial known that despite the fact it came in a wood grain box, but okay, white white box D and D. First supplement comes out, Greyhawk. Bugger all about Greyhawk in there. Yep. Introduces new character types and sort of says. So when you bought original D and D, you also had to have a copy of Chainmail to have mm. the rules. Then they said, but there is an alternative system, and that kind of made that system the official one. Right. And that's one that runs to today, really very similar. Roll the dice, look at armor class, try and meet it. And then Blackmore comes out, as you say, that adds such exotic character classes as clerics, 
Yeah. Oh no, sorry, clerics are sub- no, monks. Sorry, yeah, they, monks. The clerics were yes, monks. The clerics sub- subclass. Yeah. And assassins. assassins. And assassins are terribly broken. If you look yeah, at them, they ridiculous. are disgusting. But then there's a few more hit dice things. There's a few how do you say, hit locations, some monsters. There's the arrival of some classics, such as the Umber Hulk, mm-hmm. uh, which again is just another toy made into a monster. The beginnings of uh, the Roper, the greatest of all monsters. Yes, yes. yes. And then there's the, the Temple of the Frog scenario at the back. Oh. <laughs> When we said it wasn't user friendly, that particular supplement, it's tiny, tiny, right? Like I had to use my big yeah. screen. And, yeah. you know, I got my glasses on now for this, but like I was there looking at it and I was trying to diverge exactly what it was saying. Cause like it is just long block paragraphs. I know, Huge. Yeah. I don't, I know, I'm not a big fan of D&D's two column stuff anyway, but at least then it's like, okay, one paragraph mm. is, it's a half a page per se on this bigger writing. Yeah. But yeah, that, that Temple of the Frog arguably the first ever written yeah. adventure for a D&D campaign. But it's all this, it's all like this room is how many feet by how many feet and this and yeah. this. And, and it's just that for yeah. ages. And then the it, maps at the end are huge. Like if yeah. you look at it and you think, God, that would be an amazing thing to play. Obviously it has no ref. You'd have to work out where you are, look back and forth. And yeah. again, it's, it's somebody's notes. You're, you, you are seeing yeah. somebody's notes of how it's going through there. It's very yeah. much so. And, and the PDF copy that's available now is cleaned up. That's yes, cleaned up and I sorted out. That. Arneson was renowned for not being the greatest typist in the world. So there were a yep. lot of um, typos in the first uh, edition. But again, this help, This is. I'll read you the background for the reference. I'm not going to read it all, but this is no. the reference that you get to Blackmoor in this supplement, supplement to Blackmoor. Yep. Deep in the primeval swamps of Lake Gloomy, shrouded in perpetual mist, lies the city of the Brothers of the Swamp. That's it. That's it. Like, that's the, like <laughs> there is more about the temple, but that's all you learn about in Blackmoor. There is a place called Lake Gloomy. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> like, and, and that little that little backstory as well for that adventure is quite interesting. Yes. They, it talks about the, the, I guess, the villain or the sort of the person that you sort of face, and they're just called Stephen the Rock. Yeah, Stephen the Rock. And I'm just, and I will say, I, the various people we meet through it, I, and I know you'll probably talk about this more in detail, they mm. are either invented by players or were players themselves. They don't necessarily have great names. It's always no. like Brian, no. Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> Before we go any further, yes. we should bring it up. The elephant in the room being that this was written by a lot of men. <laughs> well, actually, and, and no, to be fair as well, there were, there were a number of female I hate saying that word. It makes me feel like such a fedora where if I say females, I don't know. Um, there are a lot in the uh, initial groups, but this the, the stuff written down by Arneson and his friends is yep. basically you're looking at 16 to 22-year-olds yes. writing jokes, and they're not funny, <laughs> mostly, you know. It's, the comedy has not aged well. The comedy has not aged well. And not even, there's offensive stuff, and then there's also just stuff that just doesn't, isn't funny anymore like watching bad monty python it is like yeah. oh, oh god it, um, it's almost like yeah it's like i bet like oh this is the funniest thing in the world we have it's like when you it's like you had to be there moments like you're telling someone yeah. oh you missed this campaign bit but and you're describing it it's like whenever someone says to you like let me tell you about your D character and you go oh no <laughs> it's, it's like it's the most important thing to you but you yeah. need to be a good storyteller and know when to shut up <laughs> when yeah. you're telling it to someone else and i am i'm very bad at it myself but i yeah reading through this i was like I bet it was great if I was yeah. there. <laughs> and even yeah. then, I don't know if it would have been great because I would have been cross in the corner. Yeah, like you just like, oh my God. But yeah, and it's a big dungeon. It's it's, it's, it's what Darnison's favourite thing is what's known as a zoo dungeon, mm-hmm. where you walk into one room and it's like, and this is a bit more themed than others. If you look at the Dungeons of Blackmore, as we will later, there's some weird shit down there. Yeah. But it's very much go into room. Here is how much money is in this room. Here are the people you need to punch in the face. Yeah. Next room, next room, next room. And it's very, you could make a, a skillful GM and players could make a fun story out of it. Yeah. But there's no real end goal. I, mean, I think because now we're so used to modules having a story. Yes. There is no story here. The story. No, not, not in this particular no. adventure as, as written. I know later as, on it is developed a little bit more. Yeah. but Yes, it becomes yeah. a, a more modern module. But in this case, it is, it is the classic thing of here's a location. Yeah, have fun with it. it. Yeah. yeah. And that's not a bad thing. That is no, no bad thing. Not I'm at a big fan of that. Um, but this is not a setting introduction. So if you think, no, I want to know about Blackmore, so I'm going to go right to the source. I'm going to go to the Ur text. You're going to get nothing. You're going to get literally, there is a there is a place called Lake Gloomy. Interesting setting, but yeah, it, ultimately, there's nothing 
like unless you're going to be like yeah it is just a dungeon crawl and just have fun with it yeah. and it, it does kind of feel like if you're not used to that something like, oh i guess great you know i will mm. say that again with the supplement as well there's obviously tables for pretty much everything but there's also like a disease list at the end which mm. i'm not entirely sure what that's for that's because <laughs> just, you're in the swamps I, yeah but i'm just like <sighs> someone oh, doesn't play osr game <laughs> you need to be playing some lamentations of the flame princess clearly so I, I need to around I'm, with it tells you how what percentage it is to catch and all yeah. that sort of thing and and, and going to cholera, the, the, a cholera influence, yeah so advanced from letter, flies advanced. not winter two percent chance to catch it day one to six days to recover lasts for one to five days recovery is four to 48 weeks and it's fatal 25 to 35 percent of the time yeah advanced leprosy as well this becomes a clear thing like you were saying before like a lot of the early stuff is just here are rules to help you with stuff and I, it's interesting because obviously now we do have like optional tables to roll stuff on like oh mm. the, this is what the weather's going to be like etc like the fact in the first fantasy one there is like a migration table <laughs> about what things are coming where i'm just like that sounds fucking dull <laughs> like <laughs> yeah this is the products of someone with a lot of time and i don't mean that in a mean way i no. mean that in a he was a college PhD student at this point. I, you know, don't don't fucking sue me if I get this wrong. It doesn't matter. But he was someone who had not only had the time, but also had the drive. To, to be fair to him as well, yeah. he had the drive. He wanted to put this down. Yeah. And what was important to Darnison was to create this setting for his for his friends to play in, which is a wonderful, you know, yeah. absolutely what a goal. I suspect so much of this, and when read when you read something like Game Wizards, Arneson wasn't out to make D and D. For anyone else, no. Arnison was out to make D and D for himself, agreed. And, agreed. Which is great, fair play. Guy Gax was out to make D and D to sell, and okay. for himself. I don't want to. Walk, I also don't want to fall into the trap of Arnison was this, you know, wonderful paragon of creativity who was done out by the evil Gary Guy Gax. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's, that. I don't. I don't, never met either of the men, no. so I don't know. And the only people who will ever know the truth for that are those two. Also, those two, people. yeah, absolutely. And, and this, yeah. this is the thing as well. Like, yeah, I think it's a bit like when we when we remember we I talked about Tola, so sort of a different theme mm. here. But obviously, Monty Cook had written all this stuff, but then obviously yeah. had the time to going. Okay, this is all my work. Here it is in a nice published edition. It's still massive but it is yes. readable, readable whereas here it's just like oh it's a reference yeah. for dave in one of the games and stuff yeah. just to do stuff so that that is the big difference for me is like acknowledging that this was useful at the time for him mm-hmm. would i use it no <laughs> well let's move on so yes. blackmore comes out and then it spawns of 100 books. No, actually what happens is Dave Arneson leaves TSR mm-hmm. and that is the last official Blackmore release, that single supplement for, I think, almost a decade. However, because of that point, you've got copyright laws, you've got, you know, blah, 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 people produce their own stuff and a group developed known as the Judges Guild. Yep. Are they still going? Are they still going? Are they still, are they still are people? I don't know. I don't know. Nope, don't know. Okay, don't know. I get them in the Adventurers Guild mixed up quite a lot. So a group who like to play these games make their own stuff. Third-party stuff appears because, you know, game is a creative. And Dave Arneson releases... Well, what actually happens is the first fantasy campaign, Playing Aid by Dave Arneson, is released. And this is basically a 88-page book and two campaign map supplements came in a poly bag. And it was basically all of Arneson's notes yep. put together. Yep. And holy shit, it reads like all of Dave Arneson's notes stuck together. Yeah. Because there is Total no editing. At the, there yeah, is no nothing. You've got a forward, you've got a slight introduction where Arneson sort of rabbits a little bit. Yeah. Talks a little bit about development. And then it starts with Blackmore, the campaign. So you think, we're getting into it. We know what we're doing. And the first thing you get is part A, scenario three. The previous two scenarios haven't been lost. And it tells you the budget and tr- size of the armies and how many heroes and the income of various powers within Blackmore. Mm-hmm. The evil forces of the Egg of Coots, the Duchy of Ten, the Nomads of Ten, and the Men of Mouse, the neutral forces and the good forces. So you're starting with an inventory. Yeah. And you get a seasonal comparison of the different troops. <laughs> you get a breakdown of how the campaign went. You've got a price list for your units. Do you want to know how much a peasant cost per man to hire for this campaign? 
No. <laughs> seven gold pieces. The answer was seven gold pieces. Oh. Um, and it breaks down into weapons. A saddle. A saddle for each horse costs you six gold pieces. Yes. So if you want to, oh, you need a draft horse, which is 30, and maybe a large wagon for the hay. Yes. So it, suddenly you started and you're already being hit with shopping lists and administration <laughs> and the cattle types are net. Then there's just breakdowns of cities. Then there's the cool picture of a boat being destroyed by some sea monsters. I hope we get to that soon. Yeah. No, no, wait, here's some internal investments rules. So we want to build a road. Uh, it'll take one man that many days to build a road mile, so 900 days. More men complete the work that much faster, but no more than 100 men can work on one mile of road at a time. This is yep. Dungeons and Dragons, everyone. Yeah, no, um, uh, infrastructure the game. <laughs> That's yeah, what we've got. Factor yeah. and weather conditions. So basically, you're doing all this stuff because this is his wargaming notes, really, yes. all jammed together with which you're meant to run around inside that world. However, you're still not getting much. No, it's very it, it, it's yeah. very interesting. Yeah, it does feel like there's a lot of post-it notes that have just gone one after another, and then we put it on the page, and then we've photocopied it. Because, yeah, because there's that little bit at the beginning, and it's like, it's dotted throughout saying, oh, we had this player that done this, mm. and that's now in the, and that's, that's in the game. And, and then later on, it talks about, like you said, the, sort of the dungeons underneath Blackmore. It goes, we actually included two things that the players created. Now, oh, that's really interesting. But it's yeah. hidden away I past all this. So, yeah, it is not, you have to go through and be like, not needed, not needed, nothing about Black Ball. And then you get to the end of the document, like, okay, there's little bits and pieces and you yeah. finally sort of get through it. Yeah, it's like the worst handover ever. You've started a new <laughs> job and someone said, here's all my notes. Yes. You've picked up a job after someone's been doing it for 30 years and they give you their notes and you're just like, what, what, what? starts getting interesting at Blackmore's more infamous characters where you start learning about some yes. of the characters, <laughs> including the aforementioned Egg of Coot. Oh, I think just before we get on to that, I, w I do want to point out, and I pointed this out to you, and I, this is sort of my laugh, because there is a little thing where it says, any resemblance to between mm. characters listed below or any living or dead, including those both living and dead or in between, is purely accidental. And as soon as I see that on anything, I'm like, Oh, these are all these are all the horrible people he didn't like, and he's just made yes. character caricatures of them. So I was like, yeah, 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 whatever. So that yeah. that made me that made me chuckle quite a bit. But yes, Rob, what, yeah. what or who is the egg of coot? The egg of coot, <laughs> otherwise known as Og of Ot or Org et Draug, etc., mm. is is Gary Gygax. Basically, by this point. <laughs> The two of them had a fallout, and the egg of Koo, Ernie Gary Gygax, egg, um, mm. was his sort of take on it. Just well, here you go. Here's here's the descent to their that where their relationship had got to. This all-consuming personality lives off the egos of others to support his own ego. Theory says he's now a huge mass of jointly operating cells, a huge mass of jelly, a giant thickly hided egg. He enjoys little jokes like scrolling obscene words and phrases on the walls of latrines and garbage cans to show its power with little yep. rabbit marks. General level of jokes indicates a level 11 intelligence with a mature age of three to six, having never been denied anything. And the egg is known to hold an unshakable grudge to, against anything that has ever in a way caused it difficulty that was not immediately overcome. Mm -hmm. It will direct its efforts exclusively towards the demise of this force in the extent of ignoring past defenders in order to go after the newest threat. Yeah. It's interesting because I know most people think it's Gary Gygax. So some other people saying it's another person at the Judges Guild who didn't oh. like role-playing games. And But it's interesting. It's what, whoever it is. And again, yes. we'll say this. We don't know <laughs> who yes. it is. But it, it definitely is somebody who clearly had an influence on Dave. And I just, this there's a bit at the end which talks about the creed, the egg's creed, which is like, might is right. Might is yeah. right. Don't give a sucker an even break. Winning is everything. Get what yeah. you want by hook or by crook. But get it. The ends always justify the means to use to achieve it. The meek shall inherit the earth, but that means the strongest will rule everything. It's like, <laughs> that's not that's not a villain. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's, 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 that is somebody else. When you told me that these mm. people, when they were writing this, were, you know, like, late teens 20s in my head i was like this this person's like 30 40 no so i'm like this makes total sense now as yeah. a as a villain it's yeah. like ah i've got thralls i'm gonna take over the whole of blackmore but also i like poo jokes and fart jokes <laughs> and you're just like what <laughs> yeah yeah very much so personal politics gets involved in this <laughs> yes this is the most interesting bit if you're gonna if you're gonna pull one thing from this document it's the biographies 
Mm. Because they are some very proto, you know, you've got a barbarian, you've got the wizard, you've got, you've really got the things that would become standardized classes and groups later. Mm. There are some definitely fantasies in the truest sense. Yep. In terms of <laughs> the, the, what is it, the most handsome man in the world and, and people will throw wines and slave girls at him. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> Blue Rider, who now is not able to haul his way around the world. So, yep. yeah. He seems content to remain in his armour at all times, although this has somewhat hindered his wenching. <laughs> yeah. Like, somebody has not... It's, again, it's that sort of thing, like, if you're handing this over to somebody, like, yeah, don't worry, oh, Blue Rider, watch out for him. Why? Yeah. And again, again, we don't know we weren't there, all that sort of thing, but it does yeah. feel to me like... God, there's going to be that one player that's always going to be like, so let's have it at those wenches. You know, yeah. I just want to play. I just want to play my miniatures game. I, <laughs> I, <don't> want... <laughs> I pitch them as to go back to it. The guy, the nudge, nudge, wink, wink guy, Monty Python. There'll be that one who's always going, hey, 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 hey. And it's like you haven't even touched a girl. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, anyway. pretty much. Yeah, it pretty much. It's somebody who's clearly not had those things, so therefore is going to just role play it out. And again, yeah. that's not necessarily a bad thing. Obviously, we know people do. You're know, trying mm-hmm. out new things. It, all these things. But it does feel like a horror. I don't, whoever came up yeah. the Blue Rider, I yeah. just, I'm sorry, I I can't be friends with you. <laughs> but um, I just I just want to quickly go back to that barbarian. Yes. Sorry, just, yes. So the barbarian, uh, I'm going to say his name wrong now, but Ma- and I, I assume it's a he, uh, Malfet the barbarian has a biography. Like out mm. of all of them, has an actual written biography, which is interesting. But I quite like how the very short like introduction about it. It says the secondary power of this creature is revulsion that overcomes all that are near it for a prolonged period of time. If this period lasts more than a few turns, the other party will gradually assume the mental characteristics of the barbarian, and only a wizard can cure it. So this idea that being a barbarian is a disease, yeah. and you just infecting other people with your rowdiness, yeah. and you're like, whereas kill everything. I, yes, yeah, I sort of like that because I, I like that. It's a great. It, it reminds me of you know you know the bit in. 2001 where all the monkeys start hitting the bones and going mad so i'm going off complete tangent here so oh, i'm gonna you might want to edit this but no. i'm a good nerd i've got a lot of friends who are nerds we went on a stag weekend once which was going to a cottage to play video games and play board games and that stuff. sounds so like the sounds, fucking dream rob don't right? do it. <laughs> 15 of us or so you know all nerds really all middle class white nerds going Got there, we're all having a nice time. Someone knocked over a can of beer or something. And literally, we all just were like, <gasps> like we all started like jumping around the room. There's like screaming and yelling, and just like like the monkeys in 2001, yelling and hitting each other around the heads and stuff. There was just like this <laughs> moment where we all just dissolved. And I think that's how barbarians would be just a little yeah. group of them, just like, a football hooligans or whatever, or just lads on a night out. Just like, yeah. that's what that's how, that's how it's, I, it is to me. It's the Thor, like another, let's go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you're like, yeah. Film, okay. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, just, um, I just quite like that idea that yes. you can only be cured by a wizard. Like yes. <laughs> you like, can't, you can't ever just, yeah. It's yeah. like you constantly have it until somebody tells you no. Like I yeah. just, I thought that was quite a fun little, but, yeah. a little thing in that. But, I think that's, yeah, and I, but I think that's a good example. The, the, the other strain about Blackmore is that it's weird. Blackmore mm. is odd. It's really odd. It is, while it's the first fantasy campaign, it is not a typical fantasy campaign. If you compare no. it to Greyhawk or Middle Earth, you know, probably the two ro- ro- other worlds that were being played in at this point, Blackmore is not them. Um, no. Speaking of Middle Earth, however, it does still have hobbits in hobbits it. Hobbits in it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Didn't get slapped by the um, the Tolkien estate that caused hobbits to become halflings in uh, Dungeons and Dragons. But the thing that makes so, me laugh about that well, that hobbits is that Me- Mellow, they're called the sort of NPC. Yes, um, they are tall. They are like big, and so. Later on in the D20 version, they said, oh, it's a, the tallest hobbit or the biggest hobbit that they know of that also likes horses. And that's the only sort of redeeming things mm-hmm. about them. And I was like, well, that's quite a shame. <laughs> they don't have it. It's like, oh, no, yeah, I'm a hobbit. You're like, no, you're, you're too tall to be a hobbit. <laughs> you then get a few more facts about Blackmore, and this mm-hmm. is where it finally starts kicking in. You get the facts about Blackmore and Blackmore Castle. There's the old comeback in, which is... <sighs> Great so name, cool. love it. Uh, I, yeah, what a great. You think that someone's come up with that name and gone? Yeah, it's, this is going in my campaign. I love yeah. it. Yeah, I love it. Half price lodgings. However, when you leave, you find yourself coming back to the inn. Walking yeah. out backwards does not help. I love that because obviously a player 
try to walk out backwards at some point to get out attempts to burn the place down etc or have you beaten by the patrons so like obviously people have tried this mm-hmm. but what a great name to come back in then you get a nice map of Blackmore, an incredibly boring drawing of a gatehouse, and you get to the good stuff now. You get to the dungeons underneath Blackmore because this is the important stuff. Why we all play these games is to go underneath Blackmoor and have a look, and also the, 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 where, the, the areas around. And this is really interesting because you get some weird things that live outside of Blackmoor. You can sort of almost tell what his favourite monsters were mm. because you can be outside. Um, hey, I'll tell you what. Fiona, throw me a D20. Oh, oh. <laughs> she reaches, gets the bag out. <laughs> yeah, you're Definitely walking through one of the mountain squares around Blackmore. Let's see what you encounter. All right, ready? That is a five on the dice. A giant. It's a good Brilliant. luck. I hope, I hope you won't just walk into a village as a level one character because you just encountered a giant. Oh. You're not a four. Would have been a Balrog. Oh, so, my God. You know, <laughs> just like, oh, okay. Orcs come in groups of ten to 200 so you know it's a good chance that you might just go oh no oh in fact could you throw me a d6 please sorry i can yeah Ooh. that's a two it was two giants you encountered. oh okay apologies yeah. <laughs> oh no so good good luck oh. um <laughs> Yeah, so basically you start getting a sense of what the world's populated with and it's a big mix of our the classic sort of stuff from D&D. A lot of lycanthropes, a lot of lycanthropes, a lot of all rocks, the uh, the great birds from um, mm. Arabian mythology and all that. And it's just more stuff, it's more tables, which actually are very in vogue these days. If you go to any um, OSR supplement, it's all tables. Mm-hmm. So this is the beginning of that. But how useful they are now. Mm. And again, rooms, you roll them, 40 goblins. That's one of the rooms. And the next room's <laughs> got eight, eight spiders in it. They even say giant Ooh. spiders. The spiders. It's definitely in the uh, that original supplement, the supplement two, it, there's a lot of giant things. And you're like, it's yes. a giant. It's a uh, was it six types of giants beetle and stuff but there, yeah. and, and i know this is a, a, again off topic slightly but there was, there was what the last one was like it's a boring beetle and i was like i've never heard of those before but i just like the idea that they're really boring rather than yeah, boring right, into yeah. me. <laughs> I was like, hello, oh, hello. Oh. have you heard about dungeons and dragons oh do you want to play it uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 but yeah when you get to the fifth level of the dungeon you can run into either 32 dwarves or three pigs <laughs> like, it's just like, what? what's going on why why are these things living next door to each other why are there 40 <laughs> goblins in this room why not? i go through the door and there's 28 dwarves what's going on i love it, it it's bonkers yeah, that's what that's bonkers. what it is it's bonkers it's crazy i think it's more you throw it and then you put stuff together 60 ogres that's what's in one room I think it's a case with this where you would look at it and you pull out what you want and what you don't want but again the learning if you want to learn about blackmore Pick up this supplement. This no, not- yeah, the, yeah. The first two supplements. They, it's it's like it's that sort of thing. As you've already said it right at the beginning. It was like, oh, if you want to know Blackmore, you want to go right back to the beginning and get the official source. You can do it. There's nothing in it. It's yeah. just, it's, it is it is just it is somebody's notes, and yeah. you know from these notes comes out the Blackmore stuff <laughs> much much later. It's, it's fascinating that it, ha- mm. it it's it's Blackmore just in name only. I yeah. think. And then, then the, the yeah, the judges' guild is really you will ge- what will this will let you do is generate your own Blackmore. Yes, it will be its own weird place with its own lycanthrope groups walking around, but it's not going to help you get an idea. If you want to sit down, you know, like if you want to sit down with your book of Planescape or your big book of Dark Sun, this is not that. So let's move on. Let's move on. Then. So time ticks on. Yep. Gary Gygax is ousted from TSR mm-hmm. and Dave Arneson is invited to write some supplements for mm-hmm. Dungeons and Dragons at this point what would be oh all that confusing is it Beck me is it the Mulvane we're at that situation where there's like four different types of Dungeons and Dragons all at once and mm-hmm. this is kind of for the boxed ones this is an expert game adventure so you've got the basic you've got companion I think an expert Beck me PC, basic companion, expert, master. I don't know. Never got that far. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Me neither. Yes, yeah, you have the expert game. And Arneson comes back and with David J. Ritchie starts writing up a few modules. And this is when 
this is where I think if you wanted to learn about Blackmore, Mm -hmm. these four modules are where you want to go because these are edited. They're written out in a way that you you get a bit of background. It's in the classic free column style of column, column, column. You get a bit of history of Blackmore. Mm -hmm. You get an adventure, the first one revolving around the comeback in. Because at this point, the official Dungeons and Dragons setting was known as Mysteria. Mm-hmm. or Mysteria, or Mysteria. I don't know, terrible name, and I hate it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was where everything was set, basically. What What is basically now Forgotten Realms? Actually, is that even that anymore? What was Forgotten Realms in third yeah. I don't know with fifth ed anymore. It's probably mm-hmm. Matt Merciland. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Matt um, Merciland. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then what happens here is you come to the comeback in, and you go back in time to Blackmore, yes. and you yes. go back thousands of years before Dungeons & Dragons, ironically, because you're going to a time before Dungeons & Dragons, and Blackmore, as it was, where instead of it being in ruins as it is now, and by now I mean the current D&D setting, and you explore what Blackmore was like. Mm. And it's weird. It's <laughs> really weird because we touched on it before, mm-hmm. but Blackmore is an odd setting. It has so much science fiction to it. Yes. Like the fact that the time traveling in is one of them. But I think I sent you a, I'll try and find the picture. I, I cropped a few examples of magic items. Yes, you did. From Blackmore. I want to see if they sound familiar. But when you were reading it, Fiona, or reading this bit, is there anything that stood out for you in terms of the weirdness of, of Blackmore? Weird as a Blackmore. So I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't yeah. read the adventures sort of things. I read more about the D20 Dave right. Allison's Blackmore stuff. Right. But what Good. came out to me when I was reading it, it felt very much like what. It felt like a development of Game of Thrones. There's all these wars happening ha- you know, mm-hmm. on the thing, but Black Ball's in the middle. The thing that stood out to me was that magic itself, people, you know, it is used, it is around, people mm-hmm. are frightened of it, but at Blackmoor itself, the actual uh, township, it's on like um, it's on like this sort of black rock or, or a rock that's got hewn on it, which yes. has magical powers. And there's a university there that's studying it. Also, all the magical stuff is very w- well regulated there. But they have a like a I'd like to think of like a wizard's police force called the the wizard's cabal. They yes. just make sure that people aren't troublemakers with magic. For me, that's a quite interesting thing. So the idea that magic is commonplace, but those who use it, they're feared, almost like, again, witch hunters yeah. and all that sort of thing. So you have people who control the magic in a certain way, the law, that have to go around to these small townships. So you have those, but then you have wizard gangs who just go beat up people yeah. <laughs> who are using magic like that. So that, that for me, I thought that was like the most interesting part of it was that this idea that magic, it, like it's it's there in the world. But then there's also the development of like steam power and clockwork, yeah. which again has that sort of sci-fi elements, a bit like Eberron perhaps. So you've got clockwork constructions and stuff <laughs> happening. And it's, it's all those sort of things coming together. But your magic, it's there. But if you use it, people are going to be frightened of you. I was like, yes, interesting. Absolutely. And I think that is a fun one. I think that's what does make it stand out a little bit. Say so It's almost the polar opposite of Tolus, where magic is everyday kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's everyday, bra. Um, so here are some magic items that you could find in Blackmore. And I just want to see if any of these ring a bell. Sure. There's an entertainer, which is an any jolly you ever wanted and some that might kill you. User loses track of time and is open to attack. Roll a 10-sided die for hours of use. Cures all fatigue and raises fighting level by one for the rest of the day. That, to me, is better than life from Red Dwarf. That's mm. uh, You sort mm-hmm. of put that on and you're vulnerable. Sure. Uh, obviously, before that, you've got robots. Yeah. You find a robot. Uh, you roll a D6 dice for its armor class, another die for the number of hit dice, and has 10% chance of throwing lightning bolts. Pew, pew, pew. Right. Yep. You can find a controller that lets you allows you to control robots. Mm. Um, so you got that. You've got a medical unit which heals all wounds within 24 hours, and you can't get out of it early. That sounds mm. to me like a back to tank from Star yeah. Wars. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then the most blatant, the tricorder. tricorder. <laughs> yep. The tricorder from Star Trek. Like literally, okay. it's the tricorder from Star Trek. I love it. Yeah. Um, and you know what? That. But then it makes me feel like. There's this thing nowadays when people are writing their homebrew stuff and they're so worried that, you know, oh, I've, I've borrowed, in quotation marks, this reference into it because yeah. I've read this book and people will see it and they go, oh, this is from this, isn't it? And there's that, mm-hmm. like, oh, no. And maybe that, that, that sort of thing, people may be looking down on that. I don't find a problem with that. If you've done something very clever and you reference something and then some only one other person knows about it and they're like, that's, I, I, like, it happens to me a lot. Like, yeah. um, we had, like, um, basically my DM put in uh, black books into a town right and i obviously the the grumpy halfling Mm. was there and i was there going 
it's burned black and but i didn't yeah. say anything because i didn't want to no, spoil yeah. it for everyone else but afterwards i was like that's really cool you know yeah. so whilst obviously if it's blatant then you're like <laughs> okay you you've deliberately ripped that off but i yeah. think there's a there is a beauty to put in the things that you like change it slightly just just <laughs> to have a go so. it's the classic never use an orc Tro, have you heard about this i've, I've heard of it but go, didn't explain you, it, you don't use an orc orcs are boring call it something else but use the stats of an orc and so you could do that with that tricorder for example what you find is a magical device that you know when you when you hold it up to a um a person it will display you know show you their status or how they are mm -hmm. it is a tricorder you know it's going whoa, 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 but you just you d and d'd it a little bit mm -hmm. i mean yes as you say that's cool the black books had a, a halfling in charge that's fun because so if you went in and it was you know a grumpy irishman in a black suit you'd be like well this is black books, black books but if, yeah. you, if you're obfuscated by one level that helps and i think yeah blackmore has a lot of that and then it also has stuff where it's just like no i watched this so it's in this and now. it's in there. like yeah it feels like i watched labyrinth the other day so now there's giant machines like the tunnel yep. borer there is labyrinth. a goblin king like, somewhere yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you feel like all right you can't be asked this going to you were just yeah. stable in this one so there's the adventures in blackmore basically it's known as the da series of modules series, yeah there's yeah four of them adventures in blackmore which sends you back in time and you see blackmore as it was see the technology temple of the frog which is a redo <gasps> back again favorite ever dungeon temple the of the great, frog the great dismal swamp for everyone yeah. hooray uh, <laughs> this time it gives you um a reason to go and stuff there's a bit more classic what we would now recognize as a module construction of here's yes. here's some saying here's a plot hook here's why you go into it there you go mm -hmm. The next one is called City of the Gods. Yes. This is mad. I'm going to read you the plot summary. Please do, yeah. In this scenario, the PCs are sent to the City of the Gods by the leader of Blackmoor to acquire divine magic, either by bargaining or by stealing. The PCs journey 4,000 years into the past to past Blackmoor. There they are hired by the Fetch, who was previously seen in the Temple of the Frog, right. because the Froggies, a cult introduced that same adventure, have become active once more. The cult is using the futuristic technology of the City of the Gods to achieve their end, and the players must attempt to control the inhabitants of the city to turn them against the Froggies and possibly form an alliance with the Kingdom of Blackmoor. Then she takes place in three parts and includes science fiction, alien technological devices, and has a brilliant cover, which looks like some out of book I, I will say the cover for it looks beautiful. I love it, yeah. Yeah, it looks wicked. It's very Numenera. You yes. could run that in Numenera, no yeah. problem. Again, it shows you how weird D&D &D was. And this is 1987, so this isn't old. You know, D&D is in full swing here. Everyone, for some reason, has the same haircut because according to Stranger Things, um, everyone from 1987 <laughs> all wore the same clothes bought in 1987. No one had any hand-me-downs. That's weird. Okay. Um, sure, theme park 80s. Um, but this is, you know, D&D &D is in its full swing at this point. But you get the feeling that this is a lot of stuff that Arneson will have played with and stuck together and yeah. run his players through seeing light for the first time. So you really see that it's weird. Mm. It is an, It is not. If you want to play Game of Thrones, Tolkien, you're not looking at Blackmore. You're looking at Greyhawk. You're looking yeah. at the Forgotten Realms. This is, and I don't like the term because I feel like it's applied to everything, but it, I think it does apply here. It's Gonzo. It's very, let's just, we, you got around with your friends. Mm -hmm. I watched Alien last night. So we're going to have a game where you're all on a boat. Shit, something's starting to kill you all on the boat. And you discover what it is. And actually, it is the alien. Like, literally, it's not even a case of I've obfuscated this. So it's a, um, mm -hmm. it's a mind flyer. See, that would be a typical D&D &D adventure. If you want to obfuscate alien into D&D, &D, you're on a galleon in the middle of the ocean and a mind flayer is killing everyone. In Blackmoor, it would be the alien. The, one of the alien ships crashed into the ocean and an egg floated to the surface. Mm -hmm. And the alien is now in Dungeons and Dragons. And, like, and then you're doing War of the Worlds on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And then you'll create your own stuff. Not to say it's yeah. it's also not ready player one. Like it's no. not, do you remember this? It yes. is also, but the players get to decide what happens in this duchy. You know, they're also town leaders and there's Napoleonic troops turn up. You know, it is very yes. it's fantasy in the truest sense of if you can think about it, it's probably can happen in Blackmore. 
Yeah, I, I really like that. You know what? I, yeah, I, I, I love it. I actually and, love it. And that's, and that's bizarre, isn't it? You think you go yeah. from two supplements which have zero things about it, pure yeah. rules, and then you get these bonkers adventures. I, I, I will yeah. say that City of the Gods one sounds fucking amazing. Really good. I am gonna get, I'm actually going to pick up these four, and I'm I'm tempted to either cipher system them or yeah. free Kriegspiel revolution. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very tempted as well. So maybe we'll yeah. split these on, on that sort split, of thing. Should we split these on that? Yeah. Split these on them. Cause, cause yeah. Cause like, again, the old fashioned covers as well. So you've got that sort of classic like primary color and then an incredible bit of artwork on top yeah. of that. Oh so. yeah. Oh, and this is the peak of D and D. I don't want to sound all oldie and, you know, or it's no good nowadays. Jesus Christ. The covers of these, the it's, Larry Elmore's and stuff. Yeah. You just like, it's beautiful. Oh. Like I, I think all D and D art is beautiful in a way, but there is something yeah. beautiful about the classic one. Cause you, it's, it captures that adventure in a picture right on the yeah. front, right? And you're like, you know what that is. So yeah. I you say that tail DD art is beautiful. I'm gonna do a little confession here today. I had a bit of time to kill, so I went to Blackwells and I was looking and I almost picked up the all the DD books. I was like, you know, I really should own the free books. I didn't because I'm not an idiot. But I picked up the Adventurer's Guide to Wildmount, Explorer's Guide to Wildmount. Yes. Uh yeah, I know she says picking it up. This part that is a trash cover. Yeah. That is awful. It's not a great cover, I will admit. It is that, just someone went onto Deviant Art, searched fantasy, and that's what you got. I will I will admit, I think that is the weakest cover it's they've done awful. recently. But like I, I'm sure I've talked to you before about the alt covers that we've had. I'm I just because I'm looking at them here. Yes. So if I pick out oh, uh, I have a question about that actually. I need to ask it. you about I'm that. A, yeah, I'm not saying. So the other day I went into the shop and they had the free supplementary books, the Tasha's Guide to the Cold Oh, that's nice. That's that's the Eberron alt cover, which is oh, gorgeous. That is smart. So stuff like that. It's good radio, love. this, isn't it? It's good radio. Yeah, it's great. Ooh, ah. Anyway, sorry, you went into <laughs> the shop and they had the the Tasha's Guide to Dragons, Volo's Guide of Cauldrons, Close. and Close. Johnny's Johnny's <laughs> Guide to <laughs> Your Mum. Um, so they had the three of them. Yes. One was in a black slip case. One was in a white slip case. Mm-hmm. So this white one, this is the alt cover ones. It's just very minimalistic in terms of the cover. Uh, okay. Okay. What's in the black one? Same books. It's the same, exactly the same books, just the uh, normal covers. <laughs> Blackmore itself again. I so I looked a little bit at the uh, what's it called? I, this is I should have actually looked this up. It's the sort of player. They did they, they basically after thirty years or so, they then put together Dave Anderson's Blackmore core right. campaign, right? Yes. So this is nothing to do with Tizzy SR or Wizards. This yeah. is a, a spawn of the Open Game License, the OGL, one of yeah. the biggest things to ever happen in role playing. In the year 2000, I want to say, when mm-hmm. Ferdad hit, basically everyone, the rules were released for free, effectively for Dungeons and Dragons. Run, go do what you want, go do it. And Dave Arneson's Blackmore. Now, if you take, I am glad that you took the lead on this because I found this book incredibly boring to read. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you can talk about this because I can. Jesus Christ. So I will say this whole book. So again, you know what? It's very similar to uh, Ghost Walk in a way. Mm-hmm. And there's a, 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 compared to, say, Tolus, I think Tolus was the greatest thing because that first chapter you could give out yeah. to people and it's great. This yeah. one, it takes forever to actually talk about Blackmore yet again. Um, yeah. So he goes through all the classes all the new stuff they've added which i again great 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 but nothing no no primer for the player at all there is there is a player's guide at some point later on but even then when i had a quick look through that that was more class stuff as well and the religions of uh, blackmore as well but nothing like hey here's a timeline which you eventually get to like on page 100 or something like that um yeah but i think for me like yeah so you talk about blackmore the castle itself it builds on this history about how it's been taken over a couple of times and has been destroyed and rebuilt, which I, I again was quite interesting. This mm-hmm. idea that the current king actually used to be like sort of a baron, and all the barons sort of voted saying, "Oh, we like this guy. Let's keep this guy in." Which is quite again, it has that sort of Game of Thrones esque sort of quality to it. Yeah. Very little on the egg of coot. <laughs> like yes, the egg of coot has, like, has lost his uh it's his, lost his the, the prominence. Appeal. I feel there's a it's but it's interesting because it's one of those things. That I think by the time it gets to here, it talks about it as sort of like it's it still has childish pranks. Um, mm. it definitely has a more oh, it's definitely a being from another world, very Cthulhu s type vibes to it rather than 
it's an egg. Uh, it's like you don't know what it is, but they call it the egg of coot. Um, but one thing I did want to mention, so we sort of mentioned it before, this high idea of having famous NPCs or minor characters that were players in the original game mm. and sort of come back in. So there's a couple in here. Some of them seem very familiar. If you've like read the first couple of supplements, you sort of they're a bit more expanded on them. Certain I say problematic elements taken out of them, mm-hmm. which is fine. But I wanted to mention, she says, scrolling down to the bottom where I can find it. <laughs> so there's um, the Baron of Glendowner and his wife. And it's, if you were interested in the egg stuff, this is an interesting NPC. So this idea that anyone that's faced the egg or in the sort of the, the realm of the egg, you go in and you don't actually remember fighting the egg. They, they come mm. back confused. And so they don't know if there's been any incursions. It's so unknowable. And anyone that comes back can't remember so the Baron of Glendover's wife was kidnapped by the egg's forces. And so he launches a huge attack on the egg, takes rivals and all that sort of thing, goes in and disappears for years, doesn't come back for years. And then there's lots of false barons that come saying, oh, I've, I've returned. And they're not. And eventually the Baron comes back with the wife and nobody else but they are significantly changed and they are <laughs> to dour and, and things. And it, there's a little paragraph saying the wife doesn't seem to be like impacted so much that she was kidnapped. And you're like, yeah, because yeah. they're both, in, they're both thralls now. <laughs> That's yes, what happened, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I just thought it's such a, I, I like that as a story, as a sort yeah. of like, oh, they've gone away and something's not quite right. So now they have, we have a baron, someone who has lots of power. Like this is all loads of baron ships and that sort of thing. You know, this is the politics of it, and now you now the egg is slowly yeah. infecting people and all that sort of things. So I yeah. quite enjoyed that as a little again. Yeah. It's, it's it's just an interesting little story, and and yeah. it's not again. I don't know if that is a player that got taken over or died, and then that got yeah. Caught. I don't know. Was that an adventure? You know, mm-hmm. was that invasion launched by a player? I think what's wonderful is that Dano Arneson now sadly has died, but his players still play every year. Yeah. They go to his basement and play on his tables and continue the story of Blackmore. That's amazing because that is a campaign. You keep benching Game of Thrones, which is brilliant, a great comparison. But those things that happened in the past were done by players. Yeah. So when you talk about the invasion of whoever or the war between these two, they were launched by players because mm-hmm. this is the campaign that has been going since the 70s, you know, yeah. that, that keeps going and thrives. And that's, that is where it really does stand above others. It's this mm. this this campaign that has lasted and is still going. Mm. It's so hard to get hold of. It's really yes. difficult. There's no equivalency. There was, you know, as I say, the, this was all done by Zeitgeist and um, Goodman Games, I think, Dave mm-hmm. Anderson's Blackmore stuff. Yes. And they did a, did a few, they did a main book, a few supplements, yeah. uh, like modules, and then they did a guide for fourth ed as well. Yes. And that's it, it's gone. That, that's yeah, all that's there is. It. Yeah. So altogether... Blackmore has had from TSR slash Wizards the first ever supplement. Yep. Well, no, supplement to Blackmore. Yep. Then it had four DA modules. Adventures. Yep. That's it. So yep. that is the official Wizards CSR production. Mm-hmm. Third party Judges Guild supplement. Yep. Dave Arnison's Blackmore. Yep. I think it's like three or four adventure modules mm-hmm. and then a fourth ed thing. All yep. third party. So that is overall about a dozen products. Yeah. Tiny. And that's it. Yeah. There's a tiny, tiny, and how many fucking versions of Wonder Mountain have come out? Never mind the rest <laughs> of Forgotten Realms. Yeah. Nothing to, and one of, the, and of those dozen, one of them's got nothing about Blackmore in it. It's just got the yeah. title, Blackmore. Yeah. It's crazy how small this is, but how dense it is. Yes. And as you were saying about the whole, the, the egg uh, thraldom as a storyline, if you want to see into the mind, of an eclectic games master, of an eccentric eclectic games master, Blackmore is your way in because yeah. this is unfiltered. This is, yes. Yes. which does mean there are problematic elements. This yes. is also the product of the 70s and, yep. you know, a thing. So there is the depiction of women, as you you mentioned to me, Fiona. It's it, awful. It, I hate yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah. And, and got, yeah, there are other problematic elements yes, as well. So, the it, barbaric, it, dark-skinned races that yeah, come not, in. You know, not that, a fan, yeah. yeah. There are problems, but you are, this is the closest you're going to get to looking into an untapped mind of one of the... Not an untapped mind, an unfiltered mind of one of the original yes. creators because stuff was coming out before 
it was getting edited. The editing in TSR. Getting edited, did getting, like you said there before, it has hobbits and ents in it. Yeah. And the before before getting copyright striked from that, you know. So yeah. The, yeah. this is a really nice I always I use this term a lot, but it's very much an ur text for mm-hmm. for a modern DD. If you want to see where all this comes from, look at Blackmore stuff. And a lot of it you'll go, this is shit. Again, I've used a comparison already. It's like Monty Python. You look at the majority of Monty Python and you go, this isn't funny. This, this, How is this funny? But the impact of Monty Python can so never be big. denied, you know? Same with Blackmore. No Blackmore, yeah. no Greyhawk. No Greyhawk, no D&D. Indeed. You know, it's... Yeah. it's so I really, I feel like I'm wrapping up here, but it sounds like this is... Yeah, um, but I, I, yeah. And I, I just want to end on... It's something that you... Again, I can't, I can't remember if we said it in recording or not, but you've pointed sure. out, like, this is somebody writing, you know, their it's their stuff it's their world that they're writing they're writing it with their friends and i love how you're saying that they you know even though david david as if i know him even though dave allison has passed now Mm. the fact that his friends still play in his world yeah actually that is such a beautiful legacy and such a beautiful way to keep somebody's alive you know acknowledge it and you know and and we always make fun of those people who like oh i'm I'm writing a novel there's always there used to be that sort of sniffy down like oh you're writing a campaign or you everyone's got a great big Mm. novel this is my go-to thing, like mm. Fifty Shades of Grey. It's had a big impact, not the greatest mm. work in the world. This person wrote it at their breakfast table and yeah. then has spawned so much from that. And you're like, that's incredible. And the fact like this, this campaign, like again, bits hodgepodge taken from bits and going, it's yeah. what I like, has spawned the imagination and got to where we are today. Yeah. That's such an incredible thing. It just it goes to show that you shouldn't, be worried about like well what will other people think because people will be like that's cool i want to play in it and i yeah. think I, I one thing i definitely want to take away from this is that i want to, to try more and experiment more with stuff like yeah yeah tables i hate tables right but i'm like okay what, what does this mechanic do because like mm-hmm. he introduced water mechanics underwater stuff yeah. you're like why don't we just try this before well, you know zero gravity fighting maybe we'll try it like this and maybe we'll try that if it doesn't work yeah. it doesn't work we just yeah. throw it away it doesn't matter you're not going to break it yeah. rpgs have the, the advantage of rpgs have over video games and board games is you can manipulate them so easily oh, yeah if you start bringing house rules to agricola you're going to break the game yes you can house rule D until it's a different game and i have and i do I don't play D&D effectively, but I do. I also do it back to the Premier League versus kicking a ball around the park. It's all the same stuff. I really think Blackmore is the epitome of that. It shows mm-hmm. that just have fun. You go out, and if it makes you laugh, it makes you laugh. Yes. Don't be a dick. Don't be harmful. Don't be horrible. Yeah, don't punch down. But, yeah. yeah, don't punch down. But if it may, if something makes you laugh and it stays in the campaign, it stays in the campaign. Yeah. You know, and 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 it will. And then, do you know what? Then when your players quote that, it's better than them quoting Monty Python. So, <laughs> you know, I it, agree. And yeah. the idea that you could come back to this world and your previous players, if you know them, or if it's you, that all oh, this mention of a character and you're like, oh, that's my character, or that's so and so's character, and they've yeah. had an impact. That is such a cool thing. Like, years the legacy later. element is yeah. brilliant. Beautiful. I would recommend anyone who, if they at all have not turned off by now, um, <laughs> interested, listen, uh, watch the film Secrets of Blackmore, which mm-hmm. is a charmingly made documentary about Blackmore featuring interviews with a lot of the original players, um, mm-hmm. the original campaign players, uh, some of whom you will recognise from the uh, NPCs we've mentioned. Um, you'll find the first ever rogue, the first ever wizard, the first ever barbarian in there. Mm-hmm. Dave Arneson's daughter, Dana Arneson's dad, uh, all interviewed about it all. It's wonderful. It is amateurly made. It's great, but it's very... It, it, watch, it, watch in a few set sittings, I would say. I see, I see. It, what, do you, where is it available? It's not on any platform. You will have you you pay for it. You know, it's like a, it's almost video on demand. Just Google Secrets of Blackmore. They have their own website. Perfect. Because um, again, I think when I came to this, I wasn't really warned to it. So I was like, I, oh God, it's somebody else as well. But actually, it, it, to hear people talk about it and pe- two people yeah. still playing in it, actually, yeah. that's quite heartwarming. So yeah, yeah I'm definitely going to give that a go. And Dave Aris's daughter has taken his place in the campaign kind of thing. So <gasps> oh, yeah. Which oh, is okay. Just- okay. Everything's ru- okay. I'm happy now. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, yeah. I mm-hmm. thank you so much. For no introducing me to the world of Blackmore, I, that we've had, we've we've laughed and we've cried. <laughs> we're, we're quite bored. We're points. quite bored. A hundred percent. I'm going to get those uh, adventures of Blackmore. Uh, I think they, yeah, that City they're of really Gods good. looks cool. Yeah, they're really good. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, be, we'll be splitting those, and I'm sure yeah. if you if you if you ever decide to put them into a cipher game, I will be over there. 
what are you up to? Any anything you'd like to plug? In the meantime? Um, at the moment, Realm of Fire is returning. We've had a bit of a hiatus for a couple of months. We released our Christmas stuff, and then my co-host Brendan got COVID, and then damaged his back, and then it's been Adepticon oh and stuff. But we are back. We are going to be recording. We've got a number of interviews in the bank, including with yourself, Fiona, that will be released soon-ish don't know we're recording on sunday with our first one in some time and then we're getting it out as soon as possible because mm. editing is for cowards so check out realm <laughs> of fire i um, this so much <laughs> <laughs> it is just believe in your own art um it is um well, david Anderson war- did, didn't he <laughs> yes dave, stop calling david you don't know him oh i don't know it's dave um, dave yeah it is a warhammer focused podcast if you're into warhammer please listen if you don't don't worry i don't blame you for not listening and then I reckon I'll probably be going out my own podcast about something soon as well because um, I've got a lot of opinions on another movement within RPGs. I want to get out there and start playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so more on that at a future day. But that's it, Realm of Fire. Check us out on Instagram um, and all podcasty places. I have no Twitter handle. Twitter is also for cowards. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's cool. me. If you're ever in Manchester as well, hit me up and we'll have a game in person because I miss playing with people. So hit me up. We'll get a table at Fanboy Free and play some Blackmore. I'll hold you to that next time I'm in, I'm in yeah. Manchester, so for sure. And, and just to sign off from me, um, I, <laughs> me, me, uh, <laughs> me, um, I run, what am I rolling? My new, my new go-to is, no, no, don't, don't do the hand gesture. That's a different thing. <laughs> that makes no sense to the listeners at home. Um, so my new thing is who, what, where? Okay. <laughs> the What Am I Rolling podcast is a twice monthly. You're right. No, I'm having a stroke. Yeah. Uh, it's a twice monthly RPG one shot podcast where we all do different RPGs uh, every couple of weeks. Uh, Long Haul 1983 is probably out by now. Next one out will be Numenera, which is, I think that's, yeah, it's, I think that's you that's that host. That's, that's me. That's, that's you. Um, some funny bits there. I still quite laugh at, of you saying, shall I show you a picture of the pyramid? And me going, well, well, that's fucking ominous like after a few <laughs> seconds of pausing <laughs> so so i had so much fun doing that and again the cypher system is a great system 100 percent for that um mm-hmm. got some more bits and pieces coming up i'm sure i've got to edit them because i'm not a coward i <laughs> <laughs> and finally if you want to get 10 percent off um offer your at your fave hang on if you want to get 10 percent off your offer code hang on Jesus i know i'm trying i'm trying i'm trying to end this episode if you want to get 10% off your order at <laughs> Space Gaming, type in the offer code DMBC into checkout and get 10% off off your first order. I've said that twice now and it still makes no sense. If, if you want to buy a D&D book, they've got some solo RPGs. They've got some, uh, they've got um, Thousand Year Old Vampire, which is a great solo RPG, which I absolutely love. And it's a beautiful physical book. But until next time thank you again rob for treating me to a setting we will be back on soon no doubt we've got other settings i know we've yeah. got in the pipeline which i'm very excited about it should um, be good yeah but yeah until then thank you so much for listening and we'll speak to you here to you see you next time see you Bye. on the flip side see stay you on hyd- the flip side stay, stay hydrated, hydrated. <laughs> <laughs>